Sound muted. Microphone muted. Also das Problem ist natürlich, dass das halt ein, das hier nicht aufgenommen wird so richtig. Radiant Team back. Na, bist du da? Dire Team Ban. Ja, ich höre einen Brumm. Don't worry, man, I'm here. Also, we're casting in English, remember? Yeah, but this doesn't get recorded because it's get remixed, so it's pointless anyway. <laughs> really? Yeah. No one oh, yeah, will ever right. see this here. Still, I'm. I kind of hope that Team Red is going with the, with the uh, rush before the game even starts. Bill picks like <laughs> they've done that several times before. Oh, so it's gonna get inter interesting, right? So maybe yeah, like they team, can go rush team before they remake. Than just those. <laughs> Team Red specialized in those troll combination picks. Ah. I've seen that before from a uh, schönes Ding, but it didn't work there. <laughs> so I'm excited. Red had, Red had uh, 8 minutes or so GG by picking IO and Urza and doing the rush in, like before the game started. Whoa. Each Eight of minutes. the heroes was level 2 immediately and the Urza was like Urza had great starting items because he got the rush kill. And it was just GG after 10 minutes. The enemy team couldn't do anything. Oh. Yeah, I've witnessed the uh, 8 minute GG yesterday. But it was against Übels and it was like, okay, <laughs> they're way better than us. Let's call GG after 8 minutes. After the Luna even body blocked the enemy hero into the trees and just didn't finish it off. It was kind of bad mannered, but. That's just cruel. Yeah, that's cruel, yeah. Yeah. But I'm recording this for my YouTube, so we can go over the picks if you want to. <gasps> but well, the picks are pretty interesting. Do you think? I mean, Faceless Void as the first pick has become common somehow because yeah. he, like Faceless got bu got buffed a little bit, and now he's almost impossible to count pick. Yeah, and either the Scarif Mage is the same point, and yeah, the Invoker not so much, but even Tide is in the meta. So I think the, uh, the picks are rather uninteresting. Both of well, strong Skyrim combos. Well, Skyrim is going to make this game interesting later on. I mean, Skyrim Mage Tide Hunter. A Ravage and a Solar Flare combination is able to kill most opponents. Yeah, that's true. I like to see that. Dire team pick. That's the cool, cool thing, because Skyrim Mage, you can pick it with Void, and it's, it's basically the same. Chrono and, and the Flare, and everyone is dead. But in this game, the Invoker, like Mask of Madness, Chrono, and Sunstrike, should kill each offlaner the same way. Well, yes, but if the Skyrim Mage is nearby the Chrono and doesn't get caught in, he can just deal with the Void. That's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> also, I hope we'll be seeing some Ravages while somebody is, in the cr is caught up in the Chrono. Yeah, it should be, like a counter initiation. Yeah, but Void uh, doesn't have fun when he's Mask of Madness on and then get ravaged and gushed and <laughs> he's basically dead after that. Yeah, like Void has to be pretty careful by, like, in the positioning of his crown. Even with those two picks, they are both very, very good against the Void. And if he doesn't crown them, then he has a problem. Yeah, and he has to. Like he has to to maneuver in the chrono itself because Scarith will try to to solar flare him and he needs to be careful that he Talk is hi hitting someone and then watches for the solar flare that he can move around it pick. and not stand in it the whole time. Well, Void has an uh, amazing movement speed while on the chrono, yeah. so he should be fine as long as he stays moving. I'm more worried about the Titan actually because if the Titan gets left out in the chrono, he can yeah. just pop the ravage. Void gets stunned. Yeah, but but EGLs, yeah. If if the chrono lands right, 
um, you isolate the Tide Hunter from the rest of the team, and if he ravages, he only hits the Void, which could be rather big for for EGL, because then the Ravage is out and it did it only hits the Void. We can see if there's some zoning uh, zoning Chronos or something like that, and the Jakiro well, it has great synergy with everyone, like he's spitting every everything in the Chrono, and if there's more than two people in there. Well, well still we like I think if the Scarf Mates plays it right, he can just keep it keep the void under control with the silences and make sure that the team can get away. Yeah, he needs to be quick on that. If he silences it when he jumps in, the void is basically dead. Because it's in, he's in between the whole team and just dies. Well the Mirano with his stun arrows could could change that. Also the Moonlight Shadow is great for the initiation. Yeah, he doesn't need to jump, he just corners inside of them. But it's, it's like this, these picks are going kind of great because each time we're discussing something, the next pick is about to come down, you know? Yeah. Like just to change the whole situation. Yeah, it's like, okay, everyone in the chrono is dead and they pick Wraith King, so someone who can be in the chrono and still not die directly after that. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they counter each one's counter themselves. Yeah, talk about mind games. <laughs> but I don't think the Rave King is such a good pick, actually. I mean, Rave King is one of the most common counter picks against the Void, but he isn't too great, in my opinion. Like, his carry potential is maybe quite best. Hmm. Yeah. It's basically a uh, support with a blink. But I think if, if that isn't a support leader, maybe it's a carry Rave King? Well, we'll see. Or maybe core Lina would be awesome, too. Like, the mean thing about Lina, her Laguna Blade can be dodged by the Void. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is so gonna... So gonna stick with you. Like, this is going to mess some things up. Oh, and uh, yes. If Void gets those lucky dodges, but Lina could be... Like, Lina could be getting a Dagon, actually. I mean, against the Void, it's pretty common to build uh, Dagon on the Nuker. So even if Void is to avoid the Laguna Blades, then the Dagon could finish him off. Well, he could dodge that too, but... <laughs> yeah. Like, we had that once in this league. Like, a Void who dodged... Uh, I don't know, I think it was a Lion Ultimate and a Dagon. <laughs> That's some lucky... Vo no, some skill... skilly Void. Well, skill... <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> it's, more, it's more about luck, honestly. <laughs> But the Storm Spirit ban is kind of sad. I really wanted to see a Storm Spirit here to just jump in and out. Yeah, EGL is a, a lot of positioning, right? The Void Chrono needs to be positioned right. The Jakiro needs to be careful where he stands, and the Mirana is basically always in, in the woods shooting arrows. And she also needs to be careful that she's not in the front line. So a Storm Spirit would be rather cool. The Doom ban is very nice here. Yeah, like it's... Doom can bring so much t so much pain to a team like Team Red here with their lineup. They have so many spells who, well, that are just game changing. And what do you think will be the last pick for EGL? I think they need an either carry if the faces boy is offlane or offlaner. And well, I think they are missing a bit of damage because Invoker, yes, he can uh, he, he does good damage. But if they build a pipe, like on the Tide Hunter or so, they still need some kind of physical damage, I think. Well, Mirana could Mirana could actually deal the damage in late game. But I yeah. think a great last pick here would be the Silencer, just because that would Silence make the game so interesting to cast. Uh, Temple Assassin. Oh, damage. I didn't see that. I thought about the Luna, maybe, but it often gets ignored yeah, these the times. I think the Templar is a very great pick, especially... Both Lina and Skyrim Mage have no armor at all, and like with a refract or with a melt and with a desolator, they're both insta kill pretty much. Yeah, and like Wraith King has one stun, which you're gonna throw at her. Lina has, yeah, Templar Assassin basically dodges every spell with refraction from Lina. She also she needs to be careful if she melts and gets solar flared from the Skyrim Mage, but 
And either the Vengeful Spirit, like she nukes with a stun and it just refracts away. So it's a really good pick, but they need to be careful that they place the Chrono the way Templar Assassin still can hit someone. So this is the time where the remake begins, I think. Yes, like as soon as everyone has chosen their hero, we'll just disconnect and yeah, sure. make new lobby. If yeah, they don't even need to pick. I think we yeah, have is Falder is in main menu, so he's already left. We don't see it yet. Well, then I'll leave too, and let's just. Yeah, Let's 10 seconds. Let's forward to the real game. Yeah, this is, so gets yeah, really cool. See around. They have all have stuns, they all have rather good lanes. And it all comes down to execution. This game is going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, so see you soon. Microphone Sound activated. activated. Sound muted. Microphone muted. <laughs> so let's see if they all pick the right ones. <laughs> no one tries to cheat. Templar Mirana. Tide Hunter. Sky Wrath May. Invoke. Range for. Takiro. Yeah. Blaze King. And <laughs> now we wait. Set. So, hey Joey. Okay, here we go. Prepare for battle. Both team, both teams start off immediately with smokes. And yeah, we'll see if they use it, or if it's just common sense. Skyrath mid. 
That's interesting. That's going to like that's going to give us some early nukes. Yeah, but can take him plus assassin? I don't know. As soon as he hits his Mystic Flare Templar is dead. Yeah, that's true. At least Refraction is, is away. She still... she can move. <laughs> they need some sort of lockdown, but... If the Vengeful Spirit does a return. The slow goes through the Refraction. So that slows the Concussive Shot. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm. At least the, uh, she has no exca escape anymore. Yeah... EGL secure the jungle? No what's placed here. But, well, okay, they missed one. The water's... The is jungle camp is blocked. Yeah. It's away. And I don't think EGS saw that. It was pretty, pretty fast. Vengeful Spirit has an invisibility rune. Yeah, she will scout the Mirana. So that Mir Mirana doesn't do some, some level 1 gank. Some lucky arrow. <laughs> she, yeah, if she stands this way, the arrow hits her that for like no damage. Mean. That would be mean. And yeah. Or she instantly reveals the smoke. That would be a cool too. We'll see what it does. Ah, but the rune. DM this rune is about to decay. Sadly, no awesome early game arrow <laughs> fail here. Yeah, what a fail. But well, Scarlet Mage knows she's here. We'll, we'll try to get the angle blocked for the arrow. Yeah. Vengeful Spirit on top lane just hidden between the trees now. Yeah, but she was spotted by a ward and EGL come at her. Whoa, that... They shouldn't be able to secure her, so I don't yeah. think they will spend too much time on that. They only have a double lane. Mirana's still missing, so they can't go on her. On bot lane, Void is having some some problems against Tide Hunter. Yeah, well, Tide Hunter has more more last hits, but well, they both are not nearly in the good stages. Like five last hits and three last hits after one minute. Well, Titan, like, both of these off lanes are so annoying to have against you. I mean, Void has his stuns, Tide Hunter has his anti smash. Yeah. <laughs> like, the Void shouldn't, shouldn't last it with the anchor smash. And the Tide Hunter, yeah, well, can only last it with anchor smash. Because his damage, yeah, it's 56, 65 damage. But. So, Mirana mid lane. Another try, but uh, gets spotted by the ward on top. I don't think that Mirana is going to hit an arrow on the Skyrim Mage yeah, so soon. I don't think. Like, you Team see, Red has he's around. He's always getting uh, behind this range creep. Very defensive. And it's the right call. If this Mirana keeps doing that, she will be way under leveled. It's like three minutes well, level one. Well, that's actually a good thing because as long as as long as at least one hero remains on every lane, she just gives the other teammates an XP advantage. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, well, if the try lane goes on, like if one stun hits, or or if the arrow hits from Mirana top lane, that should. Oh, like, Mirana yeah. doesn't need levels, she just needs her arrow to stun. And yeah, we, that we, we saw that. That is exactly proved my point. Oh, ah, okay, Sunstrip misses. But then another arrow is on, and she tries it. Ah, the creep dodges it. Well, I was starting to say, like, okay, if this try lane ever hits once in, in, in stun and gets the right stun lock, um, EGL gonna have a problem. But then they. Yeah, the Vengeful Spirit stunned, but Lina missed her stun, so they all had no mana left. Like this, no one has any mana. Yeah. Ah, okay. And evoke get burst down. They don't even need three stuns for that. Yeah, oh, and they body block the Mirana into that. That's some sick place. <laughs> like, Team Red immediately secured the advance back from the first blood. Meanwhile, Templar is just chasing the Scarab Mage around a little bit. 
Yeah, Temple Assassin is now at her at her best, I think. Because the Scarab's Mage had, hasn't you yeah, basically nothing on her. I'm kinda of surprised that Scarab Mage isn't using the courier to the courier to refill his bottle. Yeah, that's true. Well it isn't doing anything else, so they should bottle crow. On bot lane, Void is still just getting chased around by Tidehunter. <laughs> oh, Tidehunter even dives. That's crazy. Tidehunter has nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> now some body blocks, okay. Someone's getting cocky. But the Void needs to be careful. Like, Titan does no mana and the Void knows that, so... Yeah, that's so the reason why Void is suddenly playing so aggressive. Yeah, because there's a Ravage. It would be a kill if the Ravage would be ready and... Titan is going to buy his mana boots, but still... Yeah, he don't, has enough mana now. Maybe... <laughs> yeah, he's looking for a game. If he would pop some... I think he's waiting for the Void, but Void knows that this Ravage is up and goes back. Yeah, right call. <laughs> Definitely right call. And the Mirana is still in the mid lane and still doesn't hit his arrow. Well, Mirana is still level 1 and I think that's a pretty good thing on Mirana. Well, like Mirana is most useful at level 1 and at level 6. From then on she doesn't really need more levels. Yeah, but sometimes they she needs to become like level 1 to 6, there's a huge gap, there's 5 levels. Well, sometime she's gonna get them. She needs to get them. Well, I still think that Invoker and Jakiro, for example, benefit way more from that XP than Mirana, so... It's a good thing to have the Mirana on the realm. Yeah, I think that's true. And they... Well, when... Like, when Void rotates and goes around, or if they just the get a kill. Insta follow up arrow. They should have waited with the arrow. Yeah, they should have waited. Because Ravage. Oh, bashes. More bashes, please. Tide might actually go away with her. Like, get away with her. Oh. Craig and Shell. Yeah. Nice arrow, but. What's so on? Like, a rotation and a chrono and an arrow. Hitting arrow and nothing. Tide is so, so tanky. Scarif made. Even though he has the flare, he can't get the mana for it, so he'll just get chased around a little bit longer. Yeah, Team Red needs um, rotation for that. Like once done, to set it up. The main problem is even if, like, even if rotation were to come down, he has no mana for the flare, so... Tempo yeah, they need to change has nothing that. to fear at the moment. He's now bottle crowing, so he has a bit of mana. He's gonna check the... no, I guess he's gonna ward, okay. <laughs> Tight Hunter between two towers has no problems with the Void. Void almost went down to the end of left there. Yeah, I mean, Void, Void is on the edge because he has 100 life and the Titaner could go for a Gush here, like level 8. That would be he maybe the level for a Gush. He doesn't have a single point in Gush, so he's just playing his lane cocky. Yeah, but Void doesn't know if he has a point in Gush and I think level 8 would be the first level where you like one point in gush for the for the slow or one point more in crunch here. and i would be gone for the gush top lane mass pps insta, insta stunt but maybe the lina is too far off oh yes no, i and think the lina does slow down she's dead i think so too <laughs> even the mirana she actually dealt almost. very well with that situation she was dead anyway so she just put on some burst damage yeah and she's like <laughs> She delayed five heroes. And like, Void has to go back thanks to that damage from Zelina. I don't think that EGL had plans on that. Yeah, Mirana was basically almost dead from Zelina herself. And there is level 3 Dragon Slave and the Light Strike Array only level 1. Imagine 
<laughs> if uh, if Mirana stays on, on that level and like Lina is a bit more leveling, then she just melts. But Mirana is level 3 right now, so the Mirana ult... Oh, and the smoke is immediately broken. Anymore. They should know that they're, that she's here. They just need to I be... I think they know that she's there. Yes, they know. Yeah, they know and she just sleeps away. That's, that's some misplay of them. She like, the stun away comes perfectly. now and... Yeah, the stun the hero, I think the hero saves her. Never mind, the other her off. <laughs> yeah, it was like a centimeter here. And it, it, the stun connected, so she was dead. But really nice play from Miana, like waiting. They, uh, she saw here the heroes, and how they moved, and jumped in the right moment here. Uh, bot lane, Templar Assassin dies from the slow. Nope. Oh yes, she does. All like now the <laughs> flare actually has used. Void is getting chased by the scarf mate. Oh, come on. I think he's down unless he gets a lucky dodge here. <laughs> no dodge for him, he goes down. That's sick. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Wraith King. The tri lane finds another pick off. Dyer's top tower is under attack. The Wraith King, the tri lane got the tower. Yeah, Wraith Team Red himself start is to roll. Pre Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. You. So, what needs each uh, to do that they come back? Win better fights. I think they like. I think they don't need too much. All they need to do is get XP on the void. Like, if void can hit his mask of madness soon. And hit a few chronos, then the game should be changed already. Yeah, they need to teamfight basically. They have a rather strong teamfight lineup, and just get overrun by, by sing single heroes from Team Red. Like the supports, Lina and Venge can can rotate themselves and get kills on the supports. So they need, yeah, maybe not five men, but they need to go to, with a chrono and fight with the chrono. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> Team Red, they are aggressive. It's not like they they say, okay, we have the advantage, let's just farm. They are searching actively for for kills. Like Team Team Red has an advantage, and I think, and I think they're just thinking like, now we got an advantage, let's just push this advantage out and make the most of it. Yeah, they should do that. But and Void is in a pretty bad spot at the moment. Yes, indeed. But Titan didn't even need to ravage for him. Yeah, I thought he would be fine because he went went top and he, he heard the TP, but he didn't know the Titan was there and he just gets blown up. That should be the tower on the bot lane. Yeah, there's almost no HP left. I'm surprised that Scarab Mage isn't using his mana to push lane out a little bit quicker. Bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Whoa. Titan just dodged the stun arrow. What a blink! Damn Dem place. Everything comes down. At least one kill here. Yeah, the fraction is away. Well, if, if she melts now. Oh, and beautiful chrono. And like you said, like Void didn't Void care too much kept. about the uh, auto chrono yet, but instead. He just tried to make sure that Titan the one killed the A, and he indeed didn't, but instead the Wraith King got him over. Yep, Templar Assassin needs to be careful. He doesn't get this out. No, that was and a bad idea. The blade. <laughs> I think the GA Templar should have waited. Down two, ten to two. Yeah, they were too aggressive. 
they wanted too much. Casually got stunned. Yeah, but they have no damage. <laughs> it's it's crazy to say if there's like f four creeps around him, hitting him, but he takes no damage. So. Yeah, like the invoke the invoke sunstrike wasn't up. I didn't uh, like I missed that. Yeah, it was. He tried to to catch the Lina. But it was a blind side strike, so it missed. Yeah, it's like Team Red had one advantage and pressed it further. They didn't get the team fight. Like, Faces what needs to initiate with the Chrono. And I think they are. They, they can fight. I don't know if they will be okay, but <laughs> they, need, they can fight. Well, I think that the Chrono is way too weak at this point. Even a Chrono can't save EGL now. What they need is a lot of damage fast. Yeah, they need some some targets exposed, and just just kill them, and and keep it that. Like for example, if Templar would be able to get her, if Templar would be able to get a Desolator here, that would be sufficient damage. Meanwhile, Mirana just dropped. I totally missed that. Yeah, it was a stun from Wraith King, and then another stun. Like Wraith King stuns, and. Uh, of course, she afterwards can leap away, but she has always no XP left after that. It's just the leap even doesn't matter anymore. Oh, yo! <laughs> you should go up that ramp. down to Zelina. <laughs> they didn't even need a flare for that. Yes, yeah, she just went up and saw so, oh <laughs> and just died. Whoa! There comes the four man chrono. Very well placed chrono. At least one kill. Yeah the They're getting greedy. Ravage is up. Oh and she just melts. And they got punished for being greedy. She melts in the melt. Voices just back out after that one kill. Uh, Invoker goes overrun. down. And Templar will go down. Uh, I don't the think tower so. protector. She actually gets away with the refraction, at least for now. But Gareth made oh. the follow it up. Yeah, the bonus damage from the Astros here. And he's di he dives. Oh no. <laughs> and Gareth made his double kill. Was that a smoke from. And they, they run and in one by one. And the Hunter. 18 to 3. I think it's GG now. Where they, they keep feeding them kills, I don't know. One by one, they go in. Like, each time they get a tiny comeback, they try to make it a big one, and that's their mistake. Yeah. EGA don't get, get back after that. Like, they had the chrono, and everyone was there. And if they backed, they maybe would get the tower, but not, like, how much kills? Six, seven? <laughs> it's so huge. Like, they have so much blink daggers, they. Uh, Team Red is so good at chasing, and EGL is not that good at like fleeing, escaping the the fight. So they should get out when they can, and not afterwards. So they, they get cleaned up even in their base, like they were here on the top of the fu uh, fountain, basically. And even then they died, and they well, tried the to go in. Well, the problem isn't the lack of escape. The problem is the lack of damage because EGL's team isn't about to escape. The whole team revolves around team fights and revolves around huge chronos and huge bursts of damage, and they don't have that. Yep. And they even try to, like, they try to escape, but the team has no escape, escape, so they fail at that. And they need they to get in, they don't do some damage. Now, you know. and yeah, like, all Mirana in early game she can really spare the XP, but at level 5th or at the 15th minute she should be able to like get enough XP for her ultimate. Yeah, it's like 18 minutes level 5. Uh, it's not in a good spot. Well, Void Chrono is... Void Chrono is up. So maybe uh, the arrow is, is already gone. We need to wait for that. Let's see. Oh, Titan that just picks it up. Three dead. Uh, double kill for the Scarab Mage. Oh, yeah, Mirana gets swept out of the base. Vengeful Spirit just went. And, one <laughs> one Mirana one just sent it. Sends that. Now the team comes down for a follow up. Yeah, rightly called GG. GG is being called. Hmm. That was a rather quick game. 
Yeah, but it's... Uh, EGL could... I don't know what, what, what missed it. Team Red played better, got the better traits for them. Like, the trident worked really well for them. And in the end... The problem is EGL got desperate, really. I mean, they had such a nice team, but the team wasn't about escaping, so... They ju but they still just picked the fight as if they were able to escape. Yeah, they, they also overextended. Like, they picked the fight, they got what they wanted, but they stayed. And they wanted more, and they wanted more that, uh, than they could get, and that destroyed them. Hopefully they'll be more careful next game, and the next game is coming up. So guys, thank you all for watching Federal League Season 1, and hope to see you in the next game. Bye-bye. Ich jetzt eine Maus hätte.